Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's uh, lecture. Uh, of course, the lecture has generated uh, a lot of interest. Uh, the tickets, as you probably were aware, for the lecture theatres are here, went very quickly. Uh, others are watching this lecture in an overfill theatre in the same building. Uh, there is a live streaming of the lecture through the LSE uh, websites. And there will be a podcast available of the lecture uh, shortly. Tonight's lecture is the 14th annual lecture of the Hellenic Observatory here at the London School of Economics. The observatory is a research unit within the European Institute at the school, and I'm pleased to be its director. I would say that the observatory has a great team of staff, uh, very professional and highly committed, and events like this, of course, take a lot of organization. So I would like to thank them uh, for all of the efforts in organizing tonight's major event. Would you like to join me, please? <laughs> now, past annual lectures for the Hellenic Observatory have uh, been given by prime ministers, ministers of finance, ministers of foreign affairs, political party leaders, uh, bankers, other public figures uh, from Greece. And our speaker this evening uh, has actually combined several careers uh, in his uh, period so far. An academic, he gained his PhD in economics uh, from <clears throat> Oxford. <laughs> but moving on, He's a professor of economics at the University of Athens and uh, has a number of notable publications in that regard. He's also pursued a public political career. He was Minister of Finance from 2012 to 2014. Uh, he's been the head of EOV, uh, perhaps a premier think tank in Greece, the Foundation for Economic in and Industrial Research. And he's also been and is a banker. He was previously the head of Embodiki Trapeza and is now the governor of the Bank of Greece, the central bank, since last June. But more important than any of those trivial career details is the fact that Yanis Tounaris is the chairman of the advisory board for the Hellenic Observatory here at the LSE. And I'm very pleased that Yanis has continued the tradition of the governor of the central bank being the chairman of our advisory board. So with all of these posts and all of this experience, Yanis Tounaris is very well placed uh, to give an expert view on the Greek economy, current developments and future prospects. He has, as this short synopsis must indicate, been at the eye of the storm for a number of years and has uh, a close view as well as the academic exp expertise to guide us. I should say that we're also very pleased that uh, Yanis has been able to make this lecture when I think there might be some local distractions in Greece uh, to keep him busy. But also, beyond that, um, I know that he's um, fighting back flu. Uh, so having spoken to him, I realize that uh, the commitment uh, that he's honoring is something that uh, we're very grateful, given that uh, his health is not absolutely 100%. If Yanis's voice lasts, he aims to speak for about 35, 40 uh, minutes. There will then be plenty of time for questions and answers. I can see, of course, that there is uh, members of the press, uh, members of the public. I'm sure there'll be lots of uh, questions. So there'll be the lecture and then plenty of time uh, for questions and answers uh, afterwards. So with those words of introduction, can you please join me in welcoming our speaker for the 14th uh, annual lecture, Yanis Tounaris. Okay. Well, 
thank you, Kevin. It's a great pleasure to be with you tonight, and I uh, especially pleased that I see uh, old friends here. Yanni, uh, hello. Um, I will share with you my thoughts on the prospects of the of the Greek economy, and uh, I will focus on four issues. First, uh, the achievements uh, so far during the difficult the difficult uh, uh, years of the economic adjustment. Second, current uh, uh, developments in the Greek economy and future challenges and prospects. In view of the um, 20 February 2015 uh, Eurogroup agreement and the 20th March, 20th March high level agreement between the Greek government and the EU uh, partners. Third, the reasons why, why Grexit is not an option. Fourth, issues related to the sustainability of, great, of, of Greek uh, public debt. So I will start with the, the economic adjustment during the past five years. Since the beginning of the crisis, five, five years ago, Greece has come a long way in adjusting its fiscal and external imbalances and has implemented a bold program of structural reforms. First, there has been an unprecedented fiscal consolidation. In 2013, Greece returned to a primary surplus in the general government for the first time since 2002. Moreover, by achieving a primary surplus, as defined in the program, of 1.2% of GDP, it outperformed the program target of a balanced primary result in the general government. Fiscal consolidation achieved a more than 11 percentage point improvement in the primary budget as a percentage of GDP over the period 2009-2013, despite the deepening recession. So uh, if we adjust for the, the effect of the recession, the improvement in the structural primary budget balance over the period 2009-2013 reached 18 percentage points of GDP, at least twice as much as the adjustment in other program member states. Second, competitiveness has been restored. Greece has now recovered all the cost competitiveness it had lost relative to its trading partners since joining the euro. And cost competitiveness has improved by more than 25% since 2009. According to the ECB's harmonized competitiveness indicators, Greece has been one of the best performers in improving labor cost competitiveness over the period 2000-2014. This, this development reflects the effect of structural reforms in the labor market, which have allowed more flexibility in the process of wage bargaining, as well as the impact of the sharp rise in unemployment on labor costs. Structural competitiveness is also showing signs of significant improvement, as suggested by indicators compiled by the, the OECD, the World Bank, and the World Economic Forum. Third, external adjustment has also been significant. The current account in 2014 was in surplus for the second year in a row, close to 1% of GDP, with exports of both goods and services increasing at a faster rate than that of the previous year. This development marks a significant turnaround of the current account balance of about 15 percentage points of GDP since 2009. The adjustment came primarily through a decline in imports of goods, particularly in 2009, when world trade collapsed due to the global recession. However, after 2009, the adjustment was nearly equally shared between exports and imports. It is worth highlighting that uh, during the last four uh, years, exports of goods have rebounded with growth rates of real exports outpacing those of the euro area. Um, uh, of, of, of the euro area. And moreover, the share of goods 
exports in extra EU trade has nearly doubled and the share in world trade has increased by about 30% since 2010. These developments have occurred despite the adverse liquidity and financial conditions faced by the Greek exporters. By contrast, by, by contrast exports of services underperformed until recently largely as a result of uncertainty, which had a negative impact on tourism and global factors, which affected the performance of the shipping industry. Nevertheless, exports of services rebounded in 2013 and 2014 after years of underperformance, reflecting both a strong tourism season and more recently, a rebound of the global shipping uh, sector. Fourth, the policy agenda has included structural reforms. A series of structural reforms have been implemented in labor and product markets as well as in public administration. In the labor market, significant changes were adopted aiming at better aligning wage wage developments with firm performance and uh, enhancing labor mobility across sectors. More specifically, reforms involved measures to decentralize wage bargaining to firm level, reduce minimum wages and increase flexibility. Progress with uh, structural reforms in product and services markets by contrast was markedly slower than in the labor market. Nevertheless, according to the, the OECD, Greece ranks first in the responsiveness to structural reform recommendations made by the organization. Moreover, according to the Europlus Monitor 2014, Greece ranks first in the adjustment programs among 21 um, European economies based on indicators capturing fiscal and external adjustment, labor cost, and structural reforms. This period also witnessed significant institutional changes geared towards streamlining the public administration and downsizing the public sector. In the period 2010-2013, public sector employment fell by more than 20%, or 180,000 employees, through attrition. New institutional reforms were, uh, uh, have been adopted that lay the foundations for ensuring the better control of public spending and improving public financial management. Finally, the Greek authorities have greatly reshaped the taxation system by adopting the income tax and uh, tax procedure codes and the new unified property tax. Measures have also been adopted to bolster the autonomy of the revenue administration in order to strengthen the collection of current and overdue revenue. All these reforms will boost the growth potential of the Greek economy in the long term. Bank of Greece staff estimates suggest that structural reforms in labor and product markets are likely to increase potential growth by about 1.6% per annum on top of the, of the baseline over a period of 10 years, mainly coming from gains in total factor productivity. Lastly, bank recapitalization and considerable consolidation have taken place. Over the past few years, the landscape of the banking system has changed significantly with the number of banks being reduced through mergers, takeovers, and resolutions. Today, the system comprises four core banks and a number of, of smaller banks. The four core banks, following recapitalization and the implementation of restructuring plans, are well placed to meet the new challenges that the banking system faces going forward. This was also confirmed by the results of the Asset Quality Review and the EU-wide stress test exercise conducted by the European Central Bank in cooperation with the European Banking Authority made public on 26 October 2014.
Let me now turn to current um, uh, developments, challenges, and prospects. Recent data suggests that after six years of a deep recession, the economy has started uh, to rebound since the second quarter of 2014. Real GDP grew by 0.8% in 2014, that is positive for the first time since 2007. The increase in GDP has been driven by buoyant exports of goods and services, the recovery of private consumption and investment in machinery and, and transport equipment. The pickup in economic activity also led to a strong rebound of dependent employment and the decline in the unemployment rate, which, however, remains particularly high. Based on the latest uh, data, GDP growth in 2015 is projected to be higher than in 2014 and to pick up even further in 2016. The main elements of uncertainty weighing on the prospects for economic activity in the medium term refer to our ability to fulfill successfully the transitional agreement struck with our partners, a possible deterioration in public finances, and reform fatigue. If these uncertainties can be contained, then the economy will show strong growth in 2015, driven by exports of goods and services and by private consumption and supported also by, by rising uh, business investment. Exports of goods and services are expected to remain one of the growth drivers in 2015, with the global economic environment projected to improve as growth rates pick up both in the European Union and the other markets and world trade, and world, uh, and world trade strengthens. A positive impact is also expected from the further improvement in structural competitiveness and possibly in cost competitiveness, combined with restored access to financing for Greek businesses and an improving business climate. Disposable income developments, the declining general level of prices, and reduced uncertainty are expected to affect consumer spending positively in the course of 2015. Private consumption is therefore expected to increase in the year as a whole supported by the fall in oil prices and the ensuing strengthening of Greek households' real disposable income. However, it has to be said that uh, although recent hard data show that the economy continue, continues to show signs of stabilizing, soft data paint a, a more mixed uh, picture with PMI and some sentiment indicators softening over the past few months. Financial indicators, such as Greek sovereign and corporate bond yields and stock prices, which had improved significantly from mid-2012 up until autumn 2014, in line with the improved macroeconomic performance of the country and the consistent implementation of the adjustment program, have been deteriorating over the last months. However, the 20th February Eurogroup Agreement combined with the 20 March high-level agreement has alleviated part of the uncertainty. The Eurogroup's decision on 20 February 2015 to grant Greece an extension of the current program and its approval on 24 February of the Greek government reform measures has alleviated part of the uncertainty and gave Greece's government time to complete the reforms still pending and to set its own priorities. As a follow-up, on uh, 9th March, the Greek authorities presented to the Eurogroup a more detailed list of reform measures which, which allowed the commencement of the evaluation process. As reaffirmed by the joint statement by Greece and the European Union, on 20 March, the Greek authorities are expected to present a full list of specific, of specific reforms to be considered by the Eurogroup. These positive developments led to a stabilization of bank deposits after some outflows during the past three months. However, 
A large risk premium has been built into Greek financial assets, which, st which still remains high. The Greek government is now proceeding fast towards agreeing a reform program with the European Union partners and the involved institutions and in making progress in the implementation of the agreed policy actions. The 20 March high level agreement in Brussels confirmed the willingness of all parts to respect the rules of the game and the procedures agreed in the Eurogroup of 20 February. Once the implementation of the current of the current agreement is underway and Greece fulfills its commitments, then financing and liquidity constraints for the Greek state and Greek financial and non-financial corporations will ease and Greek assets should be expected to recover. <coughs> Moreover, the decision by the ECB's governing council to lift the waiver affecting marketable debt instruments issued or fully guaranteed by the Hellenic Republic will soon be re-examined and should be revoked, as in similar cases in the past, as long as Greece fulfills its current, its current agreement with its European Union partners. The full implementation of the agreed reforms and the conclusion of the evaluation process are prerequisites for the restoration of confidence in, uh, to the prospects of the Greek economy. Moreover, upon the conclusion of the current evaluation procedure, the Greek government, in close cooperation with uh, uh, our EU partners, should reach a mutually beneficial agreement on the follow-up on the follow-up arrangement involving a credible reform and medium-term fiscal policy program backed by a reliable credit line, paving the way for Greece's return to international financial markets. These actions will facilitate Greece to benefit from July 2015 onwards from the recently announced ECB decision on the implementation of QE, at least up until September 2016. Provided that uncertainty is quickly resolved, the positive momentum of the economy will be maintained and economic recovery will gain speed over the course of the year. But what are these policy actions that can promote long-term growth? In the long term, the growth outlook of the Greek economy is expected to improve following the rebalancing of fundamentals, such as the twin deficits and competitiveness, provided reforms continue and emphasis is placed on the following indicative priorities. Speeding up structural reforms in the product and services markets in order to enhance competition and innovation, increase price flexibility and improve competitiveness. Consolidating fiscal achievements. Efforts must focus on structural measures to strengthen the independence and efficiency of tax administration with the aim to tackle tax and social contribution evasion. The application of modern risk-based tax audit methods and the activation of a nationwide asset registry are fundamental in the fight, in the fight against uh, tax evasion. Reviewing tax exemptions and other favorable tax treatment. Tax exemptions and favorable uh, tax treatment, including reduced VAT rates, need to be reviewed and streamlined. Lowering tax rates and reviewing the efficiency of public spending to the extent that uh, fiscal achievements are safeguarded, a lowering of the direct and indirect tax rates will become possible. On the expenditure side, efforts to better target social benefits must continue, while the existing, the existing exemptions from the general pension system provisions must be re-examined. Increasing public sector efficiency, completing the national cadastre, and eliminating the chronic obstacles to the efficient and speedy delivery of justice are fundamental uh, prerequisites 
for a, well, for a well functioning state, as are the efficient deployment of human resources and the transparent staff appraisal framework that rewards productivity and work ethic. Strengthening active labor market policies with particular emphasis on education and training as a way to improve the job finding chances of people on the sidelines of the labor market, such as the long-term unemployed and young people who have borne the burden of unemployment. Managing in an effective way non-performing loans, the NPLs, Greek banks must now adopt an active management of distressed loans in a manner that not only eases the burden on cooperating uh, borrowers facing temporary difficulties in servicing their debts, but also enables banks to unlock funds tied up in troubled loans that are unlikely to be repaired. The banking sector must be assisted in this effort through improvements in the legal framework that would lift restrictions on, for instance, pre-bankruptcy procedures, out-of-court settlements, or, as already mentioned, a speeding up of the judicial procedure. Let me now turn to a very crucial issue and explain to you why Grexit is not an option. After six years of severe recession and five years of fiscal adjustment, the economy has now stabilized and is showing signs of improvement. If this momentum is maintained, the economy is likely to return to a steady growth path in the next few years. Grexit is not an option for Greece for the simple reason that the competitiveness of the Greek economy has now been restored over the past five years through internal devaluation and bold reforms in the labor market and less in, in the product markets. Hence, Grexit would deliver no benefit but a lot of pain. In case of Grexit, the Greek economy would enter another deep recession characterized by extremely tight financing and liquidity conditions on account of massive deposit outflows and a dramatic fall in confidence and living standards. These developments would lead to trade disruption, push unemployment further up and reduce government revenues, generating fiscal and financing gaps and concerns for the stability of the financial system. As a consequence, another round of fiscal consolidation would be required, while capital controls would be imposed and the deposit freeze would also be required. Moreover, the rapid depreciation of the new currency would serve to improve Greece's international price competitiveness, but this would also drive higher inflation as import prices rise. As a result, the gains from depreciation would be only temporary. Finally, the anchoring of inflation expectations would imply substantially higher inflation, requiring a tightening of monetary policy. Hence, leaving the euro would not allow the country to run an independent monetary policy, as the primary goal of the central bank would be to stabilize the value of the currency. Grexit would also risk the elimination of European Union budget-related inflows uh, to Greece, such as a cohesion and structural funds and agricultural subsidies. Overall, Grexit would imply huge costs for the Greek people, firms and the Greek financial system. IMF and official debt would run, would run in arrears, while foreign law bonds would force Greece into a lengthy litigation processes in international courts. In the event of such actions, it is uncertain how long it would take until Greece would regain access to financial markets and would depend on the eventual resolution of official foreign law debt. On top of all, a, Greek, a Grexit scenario would also have negative contagion effects on weak euro area, on relatively weak euro area member states by introducing a permanent convertibility risk premium into sovereign bond yields and financial asset prices. Last but not least, Grexit might entail very, very substantial geopolitical risks. 
Finally, I'd like to turn to actions to improve debt uh, sustainability. So some points here are, first of all, worth highlighting. Nearly 80%, 80% of Greece's general government debt is now held by the official sector. That is, bilateral loans by EU countries under the um, GLF, IMF, and uh, EFSF loans, as well as debt securities held by the ECB and NCBs, that is, national central banks. Up until now, Greek debt has benefited from the lowering of the interest rate and the extension of maturities on the Greek loan facility loans. The interest rate charged on bilateral loans from Euro area partners is Euribor plus 50 basis points, which is currently about 0.56% per year. GLF loans have an average maturity of about 16 years, so it's much, much larger than many other uh, Eurozone countries, especially in the European South. In addition, the lending rate from the European Financial Stability Facility, the FSF, is a mere, mere 1 to 10 basis points over the average borrowing cost of the FSF. The average maturity of uh, EFSF loans is over 25 years, with the last loan expiring in 2051, while Greece benefits also from the deferral of principal repayments on GLF and EFSF loans by 10 years and a 10-year grace period for interest payments on most EFSF loans. Moreover, Greece has been receiving the profits made by the ECB and national central banks on their government bond holdings, that is the SMP and the ANFAS. As a consequence of these actions, the average maturity of the Greek government debt has increased from 6.3 years in 2011 to about 16.5 years by end 2014. And debt servicing costs have decreased to levels comparable with other Southern European countries. Nominally, it's about 4.3% of GDP in 2014, but the actual debt servicing cost is much lower. It is close to 2.6% of GDP if one takes into account that the interest paid to the ECB and Euro area national central banks is returned to Greece, and interest payments on the FSF loans are deferred. Taking into account the fall in interest rates over the past three years, the actual interest expenditure of Greece would be likely about 2% of GDP in 2015. In view of the existing favorable debt servicing arrangements, it can be argued that the stock of debt, despite amounting to approximately 177% of GDP, need not pose such a big concern, conditional on their being a credible commitment to the agreed fiscal targets and the implementation of structural reforms which can improve the growth potential of the Greek economy in the long term. <coughs> However, in view of the progress achieved so far, in terms of reaching primary surpluses and meeting the various conditions incorporated in the adjustment program, further debt relief should be provided to Greece along the lines of the Eurogroup a decision of, 27, of the 27 November 2012. This is necessary, this commitment is necessary for achieving a further credible and sustainable reduction of the Greek debt to GDP ratio and in order to smooth out a demanding government borrowing profile post 2022-2023, that is after the expiration of the 10 year grace period currently applied on GLF interest payments and on EFSF loan principal and interest payments. There are various ways to do that without losses, without inflicting losses uh, to our euro area creditors. For example, by reducing the lending rate on the Greek loan facility, by setting the spread over the Euribor currently at 50 basis points to zero. 
by a further 10-year extension of the maturity profile of EFSF and GLF loans. The combination of these actions amount to a net present value benefit of about 17% of 2015 GDP for Greece over the next 35 years, thus improving debt sustainability. This will also make possible a relaxation of fiscal targets, making some room for additional investment spending and catering social needs. In fact, extending maturities and reducing interest rates on the outstanding debt may improve the growth outlook of the Greek economy and hence provide further support to public debt sustainability. Bank of Greece staff estimates that uh, a permanent reduction of the interest payments to GDP ratio by 0.6 percentage points can lead to an increase in real GDP by a total of 4 to 7 percent over the next 10 uh, years, depending on the fiscal policy mix. This corresponds to a boost in real GDP growth of about half a percentage point every year, on average, for a 10-year period. The economic rationale that debt relief of this form can provide, can, can provide a growth uh, dividend is that reducing the debt servicing costs can free up resources which can be used for investment, job creation, and economic growth. The growth dividend is more pronounced if such debt relief is combined with a credible expenditure-based fiscal consolidation program. However, broadening the tax base and fighting tax evasion should not be expected to weigh negatively on growth per performance. Alternative options could also be considered to improve the sustainability of Greece's public debt. However, they might be more contentious as they may be likely involve some costs for euro area uh, partners. Let me conclude. In my view, the immediate challenges to Greece are first to consolidate fiscal achievements, further specify and agree with the institutions the full list of specific reforms by the end of April 2015, implement the agreed reforms in order to allow for a speedy and successful conclusion of the current evaluation procedure. This would allow Greek banks to regain full access to the ECB's monetary operations, alleviating liquidity pressures, reducing the funding costs for the Greek financial system and the Greek economy as a whole, and exploiting the very accommodating monetary policy applied by the ECB in the Eurozone. The conclusion of the current evaluation procedure by the end of June 2015 will pave the way for a final agreement on the follow-up arrangement between Greece and uh, its European Union partners. This should involve a credible medium-term fiscal and structural reform program backed up by a reliable uh, credit line as well as further debt relief along the lines of the November 2012 Eurogroup decision. These actions are prerequisites for strengthening both economic growth and employment and for Greece's return to international financial markets, thus signaling the definite exit from the crisis. The new Greek government has now a unique opportunity to implement bold structural reforms, which would be backed by a large majority of political forces in the country. This is, in my view, a historical opportunity which should not be missed. Thank you very much. Yanni, do you want to join me here at the table? Do you want to Th thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I think rarely has an audience been listening to every word, every syllable uh, so closely uh, as uh, with this lecture. I'm going to 
open up to questions from the audience in a moment, but uh, perhaps just by way of starting things off, I could ask a couple of questions uh, myself. In part of the lecture, you were outlining the significance of the credibility issue. That if the new Greek government undertook, quote, bold and serious structural reforms, it could expect uh, Europe to help ease its debt position in various uh, ways. I wonder whether this government uh, has the credibility in Europe to achieve that kind of bargain, uh, whether you feel that this government uh, is in a position, despite this unique time opportunity, whether this government would be committed to the serious reforms you regard as being essential? I think it's honorable. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I can say I'm, I'm more optimistic now uh, than I used to be, let's say, a month ago. Um, the last uh, meetings and the, um, the, the high-level meeting of last week um, has um, given us hope that uh, the government is serious in implementing structural reforms. And uh, if you noticed also... Uh, um, after the meeting of the Greek Prime Minister and, and uh, the German Prime, Prime Minister, um, there was um, the, the body language, I think, was the correct one and conducive to, um, um, to the continuation of structural reforms and fiscal adjustment. So I, I am optimistic. Okay, thank you. Um, You've had a, a career as, as a Minister of Finance, as I mentioned in the introduction, and of course the governments, uh, the parties in the current government uh, were opposing you at, at that time. Uh, you've made a strong argument as to why Greece should remain in the Eurozone. Um, would you also expect to remain as Governor of the Bank of Greece? Par <laughs> excellence. <laughs> Oh yes, I think I, I gave you all the arguments why, uh, why Grexit is not an option. Um, I think it's not an option for, for Greece and it's not an option for, for the Eurozone. And it won't happen. And you would expect to serve your full term as governor of the Bank of Greece? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. I don't think there's anything left for you to question now, actually. <laughs> but nevertheless, I see a few uh, hands uh, going up. Uh, there's a... If you wait for the microphone, there's a gentleman here who had his uh, hand up. Uh, sorry, the gentleman just in... Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you could just say who you are and then the question, please. I'm Sushil Badwani. Uh, I'm a governor at the LSE. Uh, the, I, I know you ruled out Brexit, uh, and I know you said that uh, you were optimistic about the negotiations with, with the Eurozone, but... Uh, casual observation from the outside suggests that those negotiations aren't going well and there isn't a lot of time left. So I wondered if, even though conceptually you were ruling out Brexit, what you thought the chances of Grexident were, i.e. an accidental exit which gets imposed because the negotiations go poorly uh, and you are then forced to uh, impose capital controls. Uh, at which point you essentially begin to lose control of the process. Since I've got the microphone, I'm going to take the opportunity to, to ask you a second question. Um, very, very quickly. I think Five we'll indulge seconds. you for the one question, if you don't mind, Governor. Right. Thanks. Uh, there's a lady just immediately behind you who had a hand up, I think. Was, yes. No, no. Uh, there was... Okay. Uh, I missed. Uh, can we take the gentleman over here, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Nikolai Gorshkov, Sputnik News Agency. Uh, you were talking about body language, positive body language between Greek and German leaders. I, I think yesterday in Parliament, George Osborne said that the level of animosity at the negotiating table was almost palpable. 
So would you agree with such an assessment? And what could be done to overcome that animosity? Because surely what all sides need right now is goodwill rather than animosity. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And then there's a the lady just in front of you. Yes, could you sorry, could you just repeat the, 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 the question? It was the body language was bad and... and? Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that the body language was good. Actually, it was a positive sign. But yes. yesterday in Parliament, George Osborne said about the negotiations that the level of animosity was almost palpable. Okay. So would you agree with this assessment? And if, if we have such an animosity, uh, what is... Uh, what, what, what is the basis for your optimism then? What should be done to overcome this animosity? Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. And then we've got to the lady just in front of you. Thank you. Um, Governor Stonaras, I'm from uh, BBC Radio 4. Um, I understand some of your more positive points about exports, about GDP growth, around um, your plan for structural reforms. But um, I wanted to ask, why should ordinary Greek people ever trust the banks again. Um, they, they lent them money freely, irresponsibly. Many people have lost their homes, um, their possessions, um, their futures have been blighted, uh, many people in Greece. So how do you propose to restore public confidence in the banking system? Okay, I think we have three quite weighty questions for you to start with, do you want to, and we'll have other rounds, but do you want to take those now? Yes. Um, so the first one is about an accident. Um, well, um, if clever people understand that uh, Grexit um, uh, will be both a huge problem for, for Greece and the Eurozone, uh, they have all the, the, the instruments to make sure that an accident will not occur. I mean, uh, 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 currently, as you know, there are hectic uh, negotiations and discussions um, between the Greek government and uh, its partners in order to conclude the evaluation process and to start the disbursements. And uh, this is the way to avoid the accident. Uh, now there's, there's a full understanding. I mean, that's, that's a lot of optimism. Uh, just to, just to, to quote uh, President Juncker um, and uh, President Tusks, um, comments today that uh, they are very optimistic about about the new start of negotiations between Greece and uh, and the institutions. So um, I, I see no 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 reason why uh, there should be an accident. Um, on the animosity and the body language, I think it was clear. I mean that's uh, uh, that's a, a very clear improvement um, of. Uh, um, of the situation um, on both uh, the Greek side and the German side. I think that that was a very good meeting, um, as I can see it um, as an outsider. And uh, uh, this is also a basis for optimism. That's uh, on, the, uh, on the question why um, Greeks uh, should uh, um, trust banks. Uh, I mean, this is not a question of trusting banks. Banks are doing, uh, are are, are doing their, their job, they co collect uh, deposits, and they give loans. Uh, I mean, the, the crisis in Greece was not a banking crisis. It was a debt crisis. It was a deficit crisis. I mean, the deficits ballooned. It was, uh, it was the, the twin deficits which uh, uh, came out of control. That, 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 that was the cause of the crisis. I mean, banks had absolutely no, no, no problem. It was the sovereign that, that created the problem to the Greek banks. So it's, it's not like in other EU countries where the, the crisis started, or in the United States, that the crisis started in the banking system. In Greece, it was the other way around. It was um, the sovereign um, and the twin deficits which uh, came out of control that created the crisis. And also, uh, they, 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 they had a, a contagion effect on the banking system. So it is not a question of, uh, I mean, uh, Greeks are, are trusting um, uh, the, the, the Greek banking system. Okay, let's take another round of questions. Let's start at this side. Could you take the gentleman here, please? There's a microphone coming. Lambert Sirikotakis, Greek correspondent. Mr. Tronanas, you just said you are optimistic. But before the elections, during the first process of electing the new president of the Greek Republic, 
you made a statement saying that um, but urging the politicians to elect a president and avoid early elections, saying that early elections will damage the economy and the country. Now, do you regret making that statement <coughs> two months after the elections? Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions from the back. Uh, the lady but five rows back. Yep. Thanks. Yes, uh, Stella Lande, Queen Mary University of London. Um, just to carry on on the first uh, question about the revision of the structural reforms, the government uh, up to now showed the tendency to revise <laughs> towards, uh, to go backwards, basically, to possibly dismantle some of the reforms. Um, you say you are optimistic now, and I don't want to ask about the Grexit, but how long does it take to destabilize the economy? Because all your argument is that the economy has been stabilized. So if we have inertia, if nothing happens, or if we have reversal of the structural reforms, how long will it take to start losing some of what we have already won? Thank you. And then um, let's the gentleman at the end of the row there, just next to you now, please. Governor Sonaras, thank you very much. I'd like to um, very briefly um, ask for your comment on the Prime Minister's letter to the German Chancellor and the inclusion there of the phrase for a new contract on reforms which, as we all understand, is the third bailout. Do you believe that Greece needs a third bailout? And very briefly, I'd love to share your optimism, but the European Central Bank doesn't seem to share it. What's your comment on that? Very nice. We're getting two questions in at once. <laughs> okay. Can we take the gentleman just next to you here, please? Hi. Uh, Rory Jaynes from Redbourne Upper School. Uh, Hypothetically, if Russia or China was willing to bail out Greece, would you be willing to accept that bail out? I know it's unlikely, but judging on the current behaviour of President Putin, nothing can be ruled out. Would you be willing to accept that? <laughs> okay, so would you support the idea of the alternative of Russia or China uh, giving Greece a bailout? Do you want to start with those? Shall I start? Okay. It's on. Well, um, early elections uh, produce a problem, and uh, the liquidity problems uh, we have um, could, uh, could have been avoided. But now these, these are bygones. Uh, the question is how we solve um, the uncertainty, how we resolve the uncertainty now. Uh, after a long effort, um, the government now um, has come to an agreement, is, or is very close to, to an agreement with its partners. And uh, we all hope that um, um, uh, this agreement will, will come to, to a conclusion soon, so that all this pressure on uh, liquidity um, will be eliminated. Now on, um, on structural reforms, I think the, um, the fact that uh, uh, the Greek economy started, uh, started uh, growing in the, uh, in the third and fourth quarter of, of 2014, okay, um, shows that th this can continue, provided um, that we, we, we continue reforms. Um, so uh, this is not a question of destabilizing. I mean, it's a, it's a question of, of continuing the good progress and uh, providing some more impetus uh, for growth. Um, of course, you know, uh, the, the new government has um, its own program. Um, it has an ownership of the reforms that uh, it wants to make. As you know, uh, uh, targets could be achieved by various instruments. Uh, so the question is to respect the fiscal targets, okay, and um, to continue privatization um, and, and to continue structural reform. I think, uh, so this, this is the best recipe uh, to continue the good results of, uh, of late 2014. 
I think um, in the, um, the, the 7.2 billion of um, past disbursements, um, plus the, um, the FSF money um, is, a, um, is a good buffer uh, to provide Greece um, with a credit line uh, before it can find itself fu full access to financial markets. So um, if, um, if Greece proceeds quickly um, uh, to an agreement with its partners, then the existing money is sufficient to provide a buffer until uh, we, 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 we can have access to financial markets. Now, um, if China and Russia um, can provide a bailout, uh, I don't think they have uh, made any offer <laughs> up to now. <laughs> well, I know. I know. Okay, good, thanks. We have a chance for more. Uh, questions. Uh, there's a lady right at the very back, please. Um, hi, thank you very much for your talk. I'm a graduate student from the LSE. Um, I was just wondering, we accept that, you know, the numbers are good, the economy, you know, everything is rebounding, but I think we can all accept in the audience that this has happened at a great social cost. Um, so I was wondering if you think there's more humane economics that could be applied um, in order to continue on this great course, um, but still kind of maintain the trust levels that the recent government has seen and you know the, the general better feeling in the country. Okay, good, thanks. And then if we could take the gentleman right at the, well, yes, you. <laughs> uh, Actually, further back, further, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Lucas Vlodopoulos, LSE alumni. Uh, three brief questions which are interrelated. Uh, one, the current, you'll, you'll see, it's one We're really it's one looking question. forward to your, your first question only. First one is, what's the current depository base in Greece? The second one is, what's the methodology of determining Please. ELA? Okay. And the third one, which is open-ended. No, 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 if you ask three questions, what is the, all the if, excuse me. If, if you ask three questions, everyone asks three questions. Okay, we, so we'll ignore the first two. So just ask the first question. They're all related, but the third one is, what's the best case scenario for Greece? It's one question. What's the best case scenario for Greece? And please opine on the necessary steps that the government should take. Okay, 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 thanks. To see that scenario. Th 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 thanks for that, I think. Um, could we... Uh, if you don't mind, right at the very back, there's a woman right at the very back. Uh, Governor Snaras, thank you very much for your speech. Natalia Stefanidi, political researcher from University of London. Um, I found it quite difficult to follow your introductory part because you mentioned some structural reforms and you also mentioned a uh, taxation system starting from 2012 to 2013, a taxation system which actually um, stabilized Greek economy, if I, if I do get it. Um, my question is, how can you base uh, the rebound of Greek economy on a taxation system which is uh, basically um, the main cause, according to current research, of the rise of uh, the new government in Greece. So this taxation system actually brought Mr. Samaras not to be government anymore. Uh, so it, it is uh, a social, uh, it is uh, a social weapon for the government. Uh, how do you talk about structural reforms at this point when in, in, this, um, in London where so many Greek scientists working here because we couldn't find any, um, any uh, let's say, future in Greece and we couldn't see any of these reforms. Okay, and this thanks. is quite general. 
So mainly. Okay, no, we got the we got the the question. Thanks. There's there's a lot of hands going up. If you could take the gentleman here, please. Hi, uh, I'm Alex Saludis. I'm a graduate student at UCL. So, if there is no agreement between Greece and Europe, when is the very last date that Greece can sustain the Greek state can sustain itself in the euro currency? You're expecting the governor to give you a precise date, are you? <laughs> Um, you know, seeking investment advice, that's great. <laughs> Could we take the gentleman here, please? Yeah, Bernard Casey, Warwick University and Hellenic Observatory. You've talked a lot about what the Greeks have done and can do and should do to um, improve matters. But what happens is going to be terribly contingent on what's going on outside and i don't mean by outside whether german politicians are stamping their foot or not i mean what is going to happen in china what is going to happen in europe what is going to happen in america because greek recovery and the rebalancing seems to be in very contingent like everybody else on what's going to happen to the world economy and the world economy's prospects i would suggest are not as rosy as perhaps are needed okay thanks. On a modest count, you have five questions there, but on a more generous account, you have 12. Yeah. Okay. I think the first question is about social pain. Yeah. Um, it's true that um, uh, the adjustment um, has incurred social pain. Uh, that's why uh, now it's absolutely necessary um, that um, we return to high, to high growth. Uh, this, is the, this is the most secure way um, uh, to reduce uh, social pain. Um, the European Commission already has made a commitment um, to provide funds uh, to Greece for humanitarian reasons, uh, just understanding uh, that the uh, damage that has been, um, has been inflicted. Um, but there is no other way, no other secure way uh, to eliminate pain unless um, you um, achieve high, high growth immediately. And uh, the, the only sure way to do that um, is to uh, um, retain uh, the achievement so far um, and, and give an emphasis on, on, on structural reform now. I mean, the upside, the, the upside in Greece is huge because after six years of recession, um, the, the opportunities to boost growth is very, very high. Uh, I mean, the, the rebound um, that will occur uh, when Greece finally uh, makes up an agreement uh, with its partners is going to be huge. And uh, from, from the growth dividend, we can, we, we can eliminate social pain. Um, Yes, it is true there was some uh, outflow of deposits uh, due to, to uncertainty. Uh, now the situation has been, has been stabilized. Um, uh, the, um, the Central Bank of Greece, the Bank of Greece, and the, uh, the ECB, um, we are monitoring the situation very, very carefully. ELA has been provided uh, so that there is absolutely no problem to the banking system and the private sector. And, uh, and today also we had a decision to provide more ELA. And uh, so this, um, there's a bridge uh, until um, all, all uncertainty is being resolved. And um, um, my answer on, um, on the possibility for a huge rebound is also an answer to your question about, uh, I mean, you seem to, to be pessimistic. I'm not. Um, I think um, by, by, by looking at the, at the positive side, I see a lot of opportunity um, to, to, to continue growth and to accelerate growth. Uh, so I, I don't share the pessimism that you, um, you have expressed here. That's, uh, I, I mean, I remember uh, in 2000, in 2012, when I, I became finance minister, again, there was a lot of pessimism on the table. Um, I think the, the, the situation improved, and it, 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 it can improve now even more. 
I think, it, forgive me, I, I think the question, what lay behind the question was, is, was your comment that if Greece had been making so much progress until uh, January, how come Syriza was elected? Well, um, uh, I think it, it doesn't follow that uh, political uh, developments follow, follow, follow closely economic developments. And, that's, uh, and, absolute, and also there's no, no, no doubt that uh, um, the reduction of, uh, of real uh, disposable income um, has also played a crucial role in this. Uh, but uh, this hasn't happened in, only in Greece. In, in many other countries, you see this effect. Um, no, last date, you said, what was going to be the last date that Greece uh, sustained? Without, your, without the next tranche of the bailout. Uh, well, the, uh, there is no last, last date. I think that, that's, that's why we are uh, discussing, I mean, the, the Greek government is discussing the issue with its partners so that there will be no, no last date. That's, uh, um, there are many, many instruments to, to be used so that uh, there is no last date. Um, now, um, you raised an interesting question. Um, of course, uh, the uh, problem is not only Greece. Um, you have many problems in the Eurozone. Uh, you have um, um, uh, coordination problems elsewhere. And uh, perhaps uh, we, we need another lecture to uh, talk about these things. But definitely, um, if, if we are to focus on the Eurozone, because it will, it will take us too, too far away to talk about uh, US, China, or, uh, or India, um, definitely um, we, we need a more cohesive uh, Eurozone. Um, the, the, the Eurozone was not, was not ready uh, to, to face, a, de to, to face a, a debt crisis or a, or a banking crisis. Um, so um, Greece suffered from this uh, lack of instruments. Um, thank God we were, we were sti still alive and fighting. And um, also Europe now realizes uh, that um, it is not necessary, it is not sufficient for, um, for the distressed countries uh, to adjust themselves. This is a necessary but not a sufficient condition. So this is why we are, we are struggling and we are fighting uh, to, to, to have a more fair, uh, socially fair, uh, uh, socially fair uh, 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 European Union. Okay, good. You're happy for one last round of questions? Yes. Okay, good. Um, can we take the gentleman here, please? Yep. Hello, it's, my name is Yanis Safranos. Um, talking about optimism and remembering you uh, arguing with Mr. Tsipras in the parliament a year ago, are you more optimistic now with Mr. Tsipras or, or with Mrs. Samaras a year ago? <laughs> okay, and then uh, just behind you, the lady. Despina Tripiliotti. Um, uh, thank, like this, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you, you rightfully mentioned that unlike other peripheral countries, the problem of Greece was stemming, unfortunately, from, from the national, from the sovereign budget. So I would like to, apologies, uh, Governor <laughs> Featherstone, I'd like to make a combo question. One is like, you mentioned the increase of the ELA to 71 billion. The problem is ELA is in exchange of assets and the level of Greek bills are, that Greek banks can buy has been reduced. That's yesterday headlines. So question number one is like, at some point this um, indirect financing of, um, by Greek banks to Greek government will, has to stop. And this is what ECB is asking pressure. And number two. No, no, that's fine. We're, okay, we're, yeah, we're stop okay here, thank that. you. Uh, <clears throat> no, actually, sorry, I think it's important. Sorry, give me literally one. <laughs> Sorry, it is, it is. It's okay, I'm sure every, every question is important. Can we take the lady here, please, thanks. Hello, my name is Evdoxia Limperi. I'm a Greek journalist. Um, 
Uh, Governor, we are here for uh, implementation of the program and the uh, structural reforms for quite a few years now. Um, maybe since 2010, since the first bailout. Uh, indeed, three years ago, almost three years ago, uh, Paul Thompson gave me an interview in this very place, uh, telling me again for structural reforms. So why all these years haven't been done? Or in other words, what makes you more optimistic that this will be done now? Thank you. OK, good, thanks. Then the gentleman at the very front, please. The new government uh, claims, uh, Isaac, I repeat this, I'm a Greek correspondent as well. The new government claims that uh, one of its main targets is to, to put ta higher taxes to the, the Greek elite, plutocratia as they call them. Do you think, and from your experience as a finance minister, is this an easy task? Do you think they can succeed or it's just words for words? Thank you. Okay, good, thanks. And then the very final question, very final, the final question here at the front. Uh, thank you very much, Governor. Um, I'm, okay, F before all, I would say that I'm very optimistic, like you, because I think uh, Europe has more downside for uh, a Greek asset than uh, than Greek by itself. So I would, my question is: uh, um, Let's assume that this agreement is reached by Monday or next week. Do you expect the ECB to um, buy Greek government bonds? To that the Greek government bonds will be eligible under the QE and uh, if not, why? What's the reason behind it? Okay, good. Thanks. Can we take this now. Yeah. Well, on the first question um, of the last round, uh, every political leader and every party has a positive contribution uh, uh, to the Greek economy. I'm, uh, I belong to those um, who um, don't look at the past. Uh, in the past, um, I look in the future. I, um, I uh, try to um, pick up the best possible policies of every party. And uh, I strongly believe that um, Greek politicians um, want, uh, they, they want the, the, the uh, country to progress. So I don't belong to those who, uh, I, I will, who ma make separations between Mr. Tsipras and Mr. Samaras. I think every political leader um, has done its best are going to, to its program uh, for its country. And uh, as I cooperated uh, very well with Samaras, I cooperate very well with Mr. Ch uh, Tsipras today. Um, and as you know, I, I, I didn't belong to New Democracy and I, I don't belong to Syriza. So that's, um, um, on, the, on the ECB, there are two, two similar questions. Um, uh, the, the ECB um, will um, um, re-establish the waiver and will allow Greece to participate in the, in the QE um, if uh, it gets the green light from the Eurogroup. So this is clear. Uh, uh, President Draghi um, has explained this to the European Parliament, I think, two, two days ago. So... Uh, um, there are specific uh, monetary financing considerations now that uh, does not allow the, the ECB um, to, uh, to allow the Greek banks to buy more, more treasury bills. So, uh, Yeah, the uh, the the uh, QE will will be also uh, um, um, will be possible also for Greece to be a um, part of the of the QE after July, provided that uh, it satisfies the agreement. So, uh, and uh, due to the fact that uh, the nominal amount the, the nominal amount of Greek bonds is relatively small, even small purchases of Greek bonds uh, will have an impact on the yield. So that's. Um, that's why, absolutely, this is why I said it's imperative that we finish quickly these negotiations, that we can, we can exploit the very lax monetary conditions now. The, the, the ECB um, um, is applying to, Euro, to, uh, to the Eurozone. 
company collect higher taxes? Yeah, uh, good question. That's, um, th this is a difficult task. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not impossible. Uh, but uh, you should also know that tax evasion uh, is not only in high incomes, it's everywhere. Uh, and it is not only tax evasion the problem, it's also uh, tax avoidance. For instance, all the exceptions we have, all the exemptions you have. Why, for instance, in certain islands you have a reduced VAT and not in others? Why uh, in certain rich islands today you have a reduced VAT rate compared to the Dimotico, for instance? Is it fair? So the question is more complicated, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. I'm sure you've not had enough of uh, debates about Greece and the... I have an answer. Oh, sorry. What was your... Sorry. Your, your, your question? Structural, yeah, yeah. Um, so why are, you, why are you optimistic now? Yes. Um, up to now, uh, there has been more structural reform in the labor market and less structural reform in the product, in the product market. Perhaps that was a mistake. Uh, in, in my view, uh, there is now um, an opportunity uh, to look at those sectors um, which are not competitive, look what are the constraints, and eliminate them. So there's still some way to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, however, must bring these, uh, this uh, event to a conclusion. Hopefully we've interested you uh, in the topic and you'll be interested to know that our next events after Easter on Thursday the 30th of April will be a joint session with the Hellenic Bankers Association and we will have a panel of speakers Miranda Ksafa, Yanis Milios, and Holger Schmeiding. <laughs> Holger Schmeiding from Berensburg, Berensburg Bank here in, in London. And they will be discussing as a panel, can the exit from the crisis be socially just? So it will pick up some of the things we discussed here. But I'm sure before uh, we finish, um, you would like me to emphasize that uh, our speaker has been uh, very generous with his time and uh, very good at answering so many questions despite uh, his, his flu. In recognition of this, we wouldn't wish you to go away empty-handed. It is a tradition, some, some, uh, it is a tradition at the LSE that we'd like to, uh, first of all, present you with this gift. This is the one worth keeping. Thanks a lot. That's but it's also, it's also a tradition. This is the shield of the LSE uh, with our, uh, our motto. Thank you very much. Thanks. But then it's also a tradition of the LSE that we give our speakers an LSE cap, baseball cap because you wouldn't wish to okay. go away <laughs> from without wearing the baseball cap. <laughs>